Yes, I, I suppose I am. Matter of fact, the adventure I'm going to relate was one of the most gruesome experiences I ever hoped to encounter. I never think of it as I can help. Or oh, perhaps I'd better not tell it after all. Brings up memories that I've Oh, now, come, Dr. Watson. You're not going back on us now. The Cornish Horror, or The Adventure of the Devil's Foot. That was the name, wasn't it? Yes. The Devil's Foot. The very words still make my spine tingle with horror. Oh, well, I'll get on with it. Good. It was the spring of the year 1897. Home's iron constitution had shown some signs of giving way due to a particularly arduous and nerve-wracking winter. In March of that year, Dr. Moore Ager of Harley Street gave positive injunctions that Holmes get out into the country for protracted rest. Holmes demurred first, but I finally persuaded him. Well, the third week in March found us settled in a small cottage near Port Bay, the third of extremity of the Cornish Peninsula. Isn't that rather a bleak country for a convalescent, Dr. Watson? Bleak is putting it mildly. I've never known such grim surroundings. You must seem to Holmes admirably. Just his natural perverseness, I suppose. Oh, I dare say, I dare say. Our little whitewashed house stood on the grassy headland. From its windows, we looked down upon the whole sinister semicircle of Mount Bay, and that old death trap with its fringe of black cliffs and surge swept reefs. On the land side, our view was as somber as on the sea. Country of rolling moors, lonely and Gun colored. In every direction, there were traces of some vanished race which had left at its sole record strange monuments of stone. Holmes spent most of his time uttering round about these weird ruins. Well, everything was going along peacefully until one morning our simple and healthy routine was violently interrupted and we were precipitated into the midst of a series of gruesome and nerve shattering events. Quite a surf this morning, eh, Watson? You can see the spray flung up against our windows, and we're a good hundred feet above sea level. I don't think I shall venture out today. Mm, Bad weather. The old boy is certainly lashing himself into a fine frenzy. What, what do you mean, the old boy? The devil, what? The devil himself. What are you raving about? Didn't I tell you that the natives hereabouts refer to that seething death trap down there as the devil's cauldron? They think the old gentleman himself lives there. Dear me, uh, how unsettling. Yes, yes, a very interesting superstition. You know, Watson, that this locality is supposed to have been the last resort of devil worship in England. Many scientists believe that those huge prehistoric monuments of stone were part of a temple. Given over to the Prince of Darkness. The Prosperous. I don't know. As logical as most of the theories have endeavored to explain their existence. The superstition goes on to say that when the devil was finally driven from his temple, he took refuge in the bay down there. Yes, as they claim that on stormy nights you can hear his hoofbeats as he races up and down the rock. Hey, Holmes, what are you trying to do? Give me a case of nerves. No, what's this? What's this? Someone running up our path. His hoof flapping about like a giant bat. Why, it's that Pagelis fellow. The one who boards with the bitter. What about the gunners, eh? Wonder what's happened. Face is white as cheap. Open the door, Watson. Open the door. Mr. Holmes. Yes, yes. Thank you, my friend, good home. The most terrible thing has happened. I, I can scarcely believe it. Sit down, my dear fellow. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, that's better. Now, perhaps you can tell us what's happened. Slowly, take your time. My family, my sister, and my two brothers. It's too terrible. Why, just last night, I was visiting at the house. The Danny Quarter, it's called. All well and happy. With great cars. And now, without warning, I can... Easy, 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 it's easy, easy. Perhaps it's, uh, if you can manage to give us a few of the facts. I left them there last night. My sister Brenda and my two brothers are in Georgia. Now, what time is that? The clock in the church people over at Pauly was chiming ten o'clock as I closed the door behind me. I had left them all in the card room, laughing in a good spirit. And this morning, being an early rider, I was out taking a walk before breakfast when Dr. Richard overtook me in his carriage. With the news that he'd been sent for on a most urgent call from the Danish Quarter. Something terrible happened to my family. I jumped in beside him and he just set the horse. And what did you find at the Danic Water? Oh, Mr. Holmes, it was terrible. It was <laughs> My two brothers and my sister there in the card room just as I had left them. But what a change. What a ghastly change. Yes, yes. 
friend of Ajax. Don't do her here. And my two brothers sat on each side of her, laughing and shouting and singing. The scent is sick and clean out of them, and all three of them. My, my dead sister and my two demented brothers became upon their faces an expression of ghastly horror, a convulsion of terror. Oh, I tell you. Yes. Dr. Richard will be sure to come into sight and go fainting into a chair. Anyone else in the house besides your sister and brothers? Only oh, Mrs. Porter, the old housekeeper. He said there's nothing during the night. I presume it was she who found him this morning. Yes, she always goes through the house in the morning. Everything is out before the family comes down. When she reached the card room, she found him. She found them. Um, the shock was too much for her. She had a nervous collapse. They had to put her to bed. I don't wonder. Oh, most exceptional case. Most exceptional. Just the people. At the time, no faces of strangers in or around the house. Nothing was stolen, nothing touched. The vicar believes you're the only one who can solve the case, Mr. Holmes. You insisted I come to you. I'd be only too glad to handle the matter, of course. But first, I must ask you a few questions. Anything, Mr. Holmes, anything. To begin with, Mr. Guinness, why do you live with the vicar separated from your family? Any coldness or misunderstanding? Well, as a matter of fact, we did have a slight argument a few years ago. About some property at all. But that was all settled long ago. We were on the best of terms. Right. Now, Mr. Guinness, if I'd like to call anything, anything at all, that was out of the ordinary. There was one thing that occurred to me. Yes, yes. As we sat at the card table, my back was to the window. George was facing me. Uh, suddenly, I saw him look hard over my shoulder, out of the window. I turned quickly, and just for a moment, I thought I caught a glimpse of something moving. Man or animal? I don't quite know. My brother said he, he had the same feeling. You investigated? No, Mr. Holmes, we did not. Oh, my mother. It seemed to me unimportant. Silly, in fact. You had no premonition of evil? No, Mr. Holmes. Would to heaven we had. It's uncanny, that's what it is. Something came into that room, and that something killed my sister and dashed the light of reason from my brother's mind. Something devilish it was. That should prove be the case. I fear I should be of very little assistance, Mr. Trigenis. Come, Watson, come. I think perhaps you'd best go down to Tredenic Water at once. <laughs> the house, Mr. Holmes. Ah, whose carriage is this coming down the drive with the blinds down? There's someone in it. Listen. My brothers, my poor brothers. It's Dr. Richard's carriage. He's taking the hurt and it's so awful, my poor brothers. Easy, beginners. Keep a stiff upper lip, man. We've got to find out who's responsible for this atrocity. Yes, I... I suppose you're right. I, I'll do my best. Ah, uh, shut up, fellow. Uh, which are the windows of the card room? Uh, this one here. Oh, my God. No, I'll look out. You must have to walk in. Oh, there, there, there. How clumsy of me. Sorry, Sir Guinness. I'm afraid I've drenched your boots. No matter, Mr. Holmes. No matter. Shall we go in? Yes, yes. I've seen all I need out here. This way. Card room is over here. Do you notice anything, Watson? No, I can't say I do. This is the card room. And I see the window is still open. I'll keep her left it that way, I suppose. Yes, she said it was locked on the inside when she came quite in. Quite so, quite so. Candles quite got it out. Yes, card's still on the table. They've not risen from their chairs, I take it. And you left about ten. Well, that's at the hour of death sometime before eleven. Hmm, fire burned out. A fire, fire. Had they always a fire in this small room on a spring evening? It was cold and damp last night, Mr. Holmes. The fire was shortly after my arrival. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be about all. No disturbance of any kind. Drain. Oh, come along, Holmes. It's been giving me the jump. There's something about the atmosphere. The old death was still hovering in the air. I wonder. What are you going to do now, Mr. Holmes? I think I shall resume the course of tobacco poisoning which Watson so uh, justly condemned. Come, Watson, come. We shall return to our cottage. Did anything occur to me, Mr. Guinness? I shall communicate with you. Watson, it won't do. All the facts are negative. I say, do you think Mr. Guinness's account of his actions last night was truthful? Well, quite, Watson, quite. Remember the incident of the spilt watering can? And I did that to obtain an impression of his foot. I take it you succeeded. I did, but that printed the sample. I was able to trace his movements last night. The story is correct. 
He left the house about ten, went straight back to the vicarage and didn't return. Nor did anyone else enter or leave the house. Then, then it must have been the man or the animal that they thought they saw in the bushes. He must have returned and frightened them to death. There's no such man nor animal, Watson. Last night was a dark night, and anyone who had the wish to frighten these people would have been compelled to put his face against the glass before he could be seen. Well? There's a three-foot flower border outside the card room window. There are absolutely no footprints in that. Yes, yes. What does that mean? It means that Dragena's sister and her two brothers were alone when death struck the sister down and drove the brothers insane. Yes, hold the fact. Why, that is supernatural. I hope not, Watson. I hope not. Look, Holmes. There comes another thing at our house. A stranger. This savage little fellow. In my words, look at that huge head. With the deep the eyes and the grizzled beard. That, my dear Watson, is none other than the famous Dr. Leon Sterndale. Sterndale? What's the lion hunter in the story? Exactly. What's he doing in this neighborhood? I've heard he owns a little cottage about five miles down the coast. He's coming to live there after the day himself, and he isn't often one of the expeditions. Never mind, Watson, never mind. I'll do the honors to tell. Now, come in, Dr. Sterndale, come in. Mr. Holmes, I presume? Yes, right. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. How are you? Doing? Now, Mr. Holmes, I've come to you about the Tregenis affair. Oh, yes, yes. The police are utterly at a loss, but you, uh, you have a keener brain. Pardon me, Dr. Sandell, but why are you so concerned in this affair? Well, uh, you see, as a matter of fact, during my many residences in this locality, I've come to know the family of Tregenis very well. Their horrible fate has been a great shock to me, Mr. Holmes. Oh, that's right. As a matter of fact, I was on my way to Africa. I've gotten as far as Plymouth when the news reached me this morning. I came straight back to help the inquiry. But that makes you lose your ship. One sail for Africa this afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. I can take the next. Mm. Uh, when did you last see the Tregenis family, Dr. Sterner? I saw Brenda. Miss Tregenis. Three days ago. Just as I was leaving for Plymouth. Oh, they've been in Plymouth the last three days. Uh, yes. Oh, how do you get the news so quickly? Surely the Plymouth paper didn't carry an account of the matter in this morning's edition. I received a telegram. Telegram. Might I ask from whom? You're very inquisitive, Mr. Holmes. That is my business, Dr. Stendhal. Very well. The telegram was sent by the vicar, Mr. Roundtree. I see. Now, uh, Mr. Holmes, have you reached any conclusion? Conclusion? Well, that would be a trifle to endure. But I have every hope of bringing this matter to a satisfactory termination. Satisfactory to me, that is. Would you mind telling me if your suspicions point in any particular direction? I don't feel this is the moment to answer that question, Dr. Sandell. And I see that I've been wasting my time. I need not prolong this visit. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Oh, smell. Hello, that Dr. Sandell, eh, Holmes? He told us more than he realized, Watson. But he knows even more. How could he? See, if he was in Plymouth. But was he, Watson? Was he? That statement is something for us to look into. Stay home. Must you go on smoking that foul pipe? Why not? Oh, yes, Mr. I think I can hardly see across the room as it is. Oh, all right. I think it's best. Who knows what evil thing is talking abroad in our neighborhood. I like the lamp, Watson. It's the gathering twilight that makes you blue, baby. Oh, rubbish. Look here, Holmes. Yes, yes. Uh, what about that uh, Dr. Sterndale? Do you think he did it? No, Watson. I've been in communication with the Plymouth Hotel. The story is correct. He had been there for the past three days. He did receive a telegram from the vicar this morning. Uh, and he couldn't possibly have had anything to do with the Guinness tragedy last night. Oh, now what? Open the door, Watson. Open the door. Oh, my dear Vicar. Come in, come in, come in. Dear me, dear me. You look as though you've seen a ghost. It's, it's tracked him down. The curse of the family. He's dead. Dead with that same look of terror on his face. Who's dead? Mortimer to Guinness. What? In his study at the vicarage. My servant found him there, sitting beside his table. His face turned towards the window. And distorted with that same convulsion of fear that marked the features of his sister. Mm. Oh, my poor parish. Satan himself is loose among us. We're devil ridden, Mr. Holmes. Devil ridden. This was his study, Mr. Holmes. Mm. 
depressing atmosphere. It was worse. I had the servant open the window. He's quite ill from the shop for a Oh, what a terrible look on Turgenev's face. Huh? The whole body is contorted and convulsed in a very paroxysm of fear. You've never seen death in this form before, Watson? Never. You know of no poison that would have this effect? Good heavens, no. You... Hmm. Lamp is lit. It's been burning over an hour. Notice the oil consumed. And yet, doctors only just set in. Did anyone call at the vicarage this afternoon? Uh, no, I was out myself, but my servant says he let no one in. Well, then uh, Turgenev was alone. I then. wonder. The window was shut the time of his death, but the lamp was lit. Curious. The window. Let me see, let me see the window, the window. Yes, yes, by Jove, I think I found something. What's that you're seeing in your pocket, Holmes? The lamp, the lamp, of course, the lamp. Yeah, notice this powder, which is filled in the base of the lamp. Red-brown powder. Give me an envelope, Watson. Give me an envelope. I must have suspected the powder. Why are you so excited about the powder, Holmes? Because it contains a solution of our mystery, Watson. It is a thought and a solution. I say, Holmes, you haven't touched your supper. <laughs> oh, what a foul night. The wind's rising again. Oh, this place is getting on my nerves. Be quiet, Watson. Be quiet. Be quiet. I don't want to be quiet. I want to talk. I'm tired of sitting here listening to that wind and the roar of the surf down below. But well, why did you send for Dr. Stone? Then? Because he is an authority on obscure African poison. Poison? Why are you interested in poison? Watson, there are two striking points in common in both cases under observation. Yes? In both cases, the atmosphere of the room had a curious effect on the persons of first entities. The housekeeper and the vicar's servants both were overcome, as was the doctor who was called in. That's right. I haven't thought of that. The room was still stuffy when he entered. Right. In each case, there was combustion going on in the room. The fire in the first place, the lamp in the second. And the lamp was not necessary. It was still daylight when it was lit. Yes, but don't you see? Something was burned in each case, which produced an atmosphere causing strange toxic effects. An unknown poison. Good heavens. I believe we have a sample of that poison in the brown powder spilled in the base of the lamp. But how are you going to prove it? I'm going to burn some of that powder. And notice its effect. Just a small pinch of the powder. Uh, perhaps you'd better leave the room, Watson. Oh, leave you alone in here? Nothing is not. I, I warn you, it, it's risky. Oh, come on, Jim. Well, come on, let's get on with this. Very well. Take your chair opposite mine. Then we can watch each other for development. Right. Come along, come along, I'm ready. Good. I put a pinch of the powder into our lamp. No. Musky. Couple. Noxious. Oh, listen to the wind. Boom. Boom. I... I'm afraid. I don't know why. But wind. I... I... I, I can feel my hair rising. Boom, you see? That cloud bank. Whirling, black and sinister. A most monstrous. It's concealing something. Something to put it to a magic. Oh, it's coming nearer. A little nearer. Come with me. That's when it's finished to me. Here, let's hold it. Hold it. It's hoofing. Hoofing. I know what it is. I can see it. Oh, I can't stand it. It's too terrible. Here, watch him. Watch him for the love of heaven. Don't get in. Don't breathe. Yes, I'll smash the window. I'll smash. Oh, yes, there, that's better. Now, now, breathe it, Watson. Breathe it in. Good, clean air. Oh, what a letter with tape. I had no idea it was so powerful. Oh, thank you. I know. I know. It's a poison of effect. It's a nerve. It's the imagination. The strain is enough to kill a man or drive him crazy. Oh, no. Someone's knocking the door. And I thought it was too. And the air seems to clean out. Good thing there was a high wind. Yes. I'll close the shutters and draw the curtain. Yes, I may open the door. Oh, well. Come on. I need to open. Here, Jared. Come in, Dr. Stone. Come in. You uh, look rather pale, both of you. Yeah, Jared. We've just been conducting a little, a little experiment. There's a poison that kills Trugenis. You do? Yes, Dr. Stone. There. Perhaps you'd like to tell us why you killed Morpher Trugenis. I? You can't prove it. No? Now, let me tell you how you did it. You came over to the big late this afternoon. You didn't want anyone to know, Guinness. He was to let you in himself, but how could you attract his attention? 
You brought some pebbles with you, pink pebbles from a heap beside your house. You threw these at the study window. I found some of these pebbles on the windowsill. McGinnis came downstairs, let you in himself. You had a talk with him. Made him light his lamp. Placed a pinch of the poison powder in the flame and left. You're right, Mr. I did kill Mortimer Trigger. Well, no, no. I'm not guilty of the other atrocity. I swear I'm not. I believe you, Dr. Sterndale. But you know who did do it. Perhaps you'd better tell us about it. Very well. It was Mortimer Trigger. Huh? He admitted it before I... Before he died. Mr. Holmes, I have been in love with Brenda Trigger for many years. We were to have been married when my work in Africa was finished. I've lived so long in places where man is a law unto himself, I took my own revenge. He killed Brenda. In cold blood, he killed her. I have nothing more to live for. By heaven, I do it again. But how did Mortimer Tregenis get hold of the poison? It was something unusual, almost unknown. Yes. It was found in the Avalon. The foot, eh? Yes. A root found in Africa. Shaped like a foot, half human, half toad like. I have the only specimen in England. And you showed it to Trigenis? Yes. He was over the other afternoon when I was packing. He was interested in my African curiosity, particularly this powder. I thought no more of the matter until I received the biggest telegram and learned how they had died. I returned at once. On looking into the tragedy, I was convinced Mortimer Trigenis was a murderer and that he had done it to gain control of the family fortune. Now, there was a crime, but what was to be his punishment? Who jury would believe such a fantastic story? I decided to take the law into my own hands. Perhaps, if you have ever loved anyone, you will know how I felt. Hmm. Dr. Sterner, what were your plans when you set out for Finnish? I had intended to bury myself in Central Africa. My work is only half finished. Go and finish the other half, Dr. Sterner. I don't feel called upon to present you. What a gruesome story, Dr. Watson. Yeah. Next to the famous hound of the basket of adventure, that was the most gruesome experience we ever had. There's just one thing I'd like to know. What did you think you saw in that cloud of smoke? Mr. Bell, you have to believe me when I tell you that it was too horrible to mention. Just to think of it was enough to make my blood turn to water. I don't wonder. Well, let's not think about it anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, today those who need money for emergencies will find that the household finance loan plan makes that money available quickly and privately. Quickly because there is no red tape involved in the making of a household finance loan. Privately, because you need not call upon relatives or friends for help. The household finance loan plan is truly the simple modern way to borrow cash. And the plan is open to single persons and married couples. And both may borrow on their own signature. Anyone who can make regular monthly payments may apply. Why not spend a profitable hour tomorrow talking over your money problem? Get your bills together and then visit a household finance office early Monday morning. Discuss your situation with a friendly household finance representative in a private consultation room. And remember, household finance believes that a loan in itself is not sufficient. Their plan goes further. Once a household finance loan has helped you make a fresh start, household doctor of family finances will help you keep even with the help of his money management plan of ordered spending. Ordered spending is not another old-time cut-and-dried budget system, but a practical method of stopping those tiny leaks in the family pocketbook that are daily robbing you of many of the rewards of life. Act Monday. Don't delay. Arrange for a household loan and help yourself to a fresh start. There are 193 locally managed household finance offices in 134 cities. And you'll find an office conveniently located in your city.
In the law for 14 houses, and I'm talking. This conveniently located in the happy booking of the Long Island.